the vast majority of videos, I think, are maybe just like old, or they're written about something that's not in the game anymore. Um, but there are definitely some some videos from back there that I'm still continuing to refer back to. Um, Why every team needs a front line is one that I keep coming back to, and like, it's it's tricky because I it, there are only so many ways that I have to be able to keep getting these videos promoted because I'll make a video and then a month later, someone will come to me asking a question about that same thing I already made a video about. And I'm like, what am I making the videos for if people aren't going to see them and, and learn these things from them? But also it's like, well, how are they going to find these videos? Because they're not getting recommended because I'm posting daily. So I think one, one way that I've tried to combat this is by creating a playlist uh, Gems Picks. This playlist... Oh, no, 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 no. That's not what I wanted. Um, this playlist has some of the videos that I think were best made and most important to understand. That's kind of what I was going for with this. It's like, here are the videos that, like, I think you should watch from my channel. Boink. So this is uh, the screen where it shows all of my videos, even some of the ones that are not listed. Um, so some of these will be like um, individual lessons with people that I just post uh, of recordings of lessons that I've done for them for after the fact um, that people can't go and find and that you will not have the link to to be able to see. So some of those, you know, we can skip over a little bit, but that... Really, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to go over... Can I sort by view? Ooh, I can sort by views. That makes this way easier. Oh, wait, but it's going to... Ooh. It's also going to make it so that all of the ones that are at the top are shorts. <laughs> um, I think we'll just scroll through this until we find the actual videos. Because um, I want to talk about the ones that are most popular. I think that's important to do because... You know, those are probably the ones that people, you know, people will sort by, like, most popular on the channel. And so these are the ones they're going to find. So we'll just kind of go down the list for a little bit. Maybe look at the top 15, 20 or something like that. Um, and talk about those. And then I think what I'll also do is go and find the videos of mine that I think more people should watch. Um, th there are a lot of videos I have where I'm like... This is a question I get all the time, or this is an issue that I see all the time, but only so many people actually watched it. Uh, so the what am I doing videos, those are some of the videos that I stand by the absolute most. Um, what am I doing and the how to get out of ranked series that came before it, which is very much uh, similar content, very long form. I spend a long time on those scripts and I spend a long time on the editing of those. And uh, I try to make them pretty airtight. Um, so those ones I'll, I'll generally stand by. They also take a really long time. <laughs> like, you, you look at, like, the, the time frame in between the different installments of the uh, How to Get Out of Rank series. We're talking, like, four or five months in between each one sometimes. Um, those took a really long time because I was doing other things on the side. And the same thing's happening with what am I doing videos. So before someone asks, when's it coming out? The answer is eventually. I'm still working on it. But uh, the problem I have watching old videos is I don't know if they're still useful info because of all new updates. Usually the answer is that they're still useful unless I'm talking about the metagame. If I'm talking about the metagame, like here are the weapons people are playing right now, obviously that's not true. If I start talking about the Kensa 52 gal, you know that this is a little bit out of date. Anyway, um, Weapon Rolls video is by far the biggest uh, like non-shorts video on the channel. It's not close. That one blew up like crazy, and I think for good reason. It is one of the better videos that I have put out, um, and it's information that I think not a lot of people understood unless they had read FLC specifically. Um, so I hope that it brought a lot of attention to FLC in particular, um, and that now he is forced to clarify all of his points even further because people only are familiar with him from Squid School and are going to annoy him with misunderstandings of his own opinions, um, which is exactly the place that we want him in because that's when he gives us more information and clarifies his claims. So, <laughs> sorry, FLC, but you're, 
it, it, it's good for it's good for the community. <laughs> and now the very the very next one is a different story. Um, this is honestly one of the most wrong videos on the channel. So here's the thing about this video: inking base isn't what wins turf war. This is aimed at a very casual audience of players who have a certain outlook on turf war, um, where their thought is, I'm doing my job even if I just paint the map. Um, and it doesn't matter whether I get kills or not, because I painted the map a lot, and that made my score go higher. And so I'm doing, I'm doing things that help me win. And... It is that particular perspective that I was trying to combat with this video because um, that is not really true. You, your weapon does still need to be able to fight. It needs to be able to control space. Um, if it can't control space, then as soon as it moves up to try and paint, it just gets splatted. So that much is true. However, the context of that conversation is pretty like localized personalized to someone with that exact perspective and i do think that that is a sizable amount of the people who will have seen this video however when you look at uh one of the koshin tournaments one of the top level japanese tournaments where they actually do play turf war at a very high competitive level the very first thing that you're going to see a lot of the time is two members of that team are going to spend 25 to 30 seconds just painting the base when we went in, VOD reviewed uh, Kiwi, who was a, uh, at the time was playing for Last Resort. I know they have a team again. I don't remember what team that is, but Last Resort was Chara's team. Like top level player um, was going for rank one in Turf War in the Splatfest that day or that uh, week, I think. And we were looking at one of Kiwi's VODs to try and figure out, you know, to learn the, the turf metagame and to maybe give any comments that I might have on their play that maybe they could consider and learn from. Um, and one of the first things that Kiwi does is paint up a whole bunch of the spawn for special, which makes a lot of sense because he was playing a uh, splash. So wanted to get a crab tank really quickly and also wanted to make it so that um, later on in the game, they don't have to go back and attend to that spot of uh, spot and spawn because Something, a variable that I had failed to consider at that time was that in Turf War, the time spent painting your base isn't time spent controlling the map. And that is a problem. However, it's more of a problem if you have to paint the base closer to the end of the game. Closer to the end of the game is where it matters more to have map control. Um, the way that Kiwi approaches it is that about by like 1 minute 30 seconds left, they want to have map control in mid. But that means that if they want to paint the base, they've got to get it painted fairly early. So, on one hand, I still stand by the vast majority of what I say in this video. Because if you don't have a weapon that's capable of fighting, or if you don't have a skill set of being able to fight, then you are just going to be less impactful on a game of Splatoon than if you could both paint and fight. But... There were some misrepresentations of the way that Turf War is played in this video that I definitely don't agree with anymore. And so it's definitely up there in terms of like, this. there are parts of this that are definitely misleading, at the very least. Um, weapon tier list. I mean, tier lists are all very temporary. They're all my thoughts in the moment. Um... And, like, I could go back and comment on, like, whether I agreed with this, but that wouldn't even matter because we have a new metagame now. And so all the weapons are going to be in different places. Um, I, I, like, what would the point be of having a retrospective on what I think that the tier list actually was back on an earlier patch? Like, I don't know. There's not too much to talk about with that. Uh, how to get out of rank series. Definitely. Um, like I said, still stand by this. And I think the S plus video is absolutely one of the best videos I've made, um, to this day. This encompasses so many of the things that someone needs to get better at the game. It says Splatoon 2. It does not matter that it says Splatoon 2. If you have not watched this video of mine and you appreciate my other content, go watch it. It's definitely got, it's packed full of a lot of important things. Explaining top players' gear builds. This also is one of those temporary metagame focused ones. I'm probably not going to get too far into that. 
Splatfest balance was a really interesting one. Um, and I actually have a video kind of correcting some of the assumptions that I walked in with. Because I went over this with uh, Aplo, who is a mathematician. Um, and there were, you know, some suggestions that they made to help improve it. And even then, it came out not being a very good predictor of how Splatfests actually work. Um, but for those who don't know, I made a, a model in an Excel spreadsheet um, that seemed to suggest that there was a massive advantage to the teams that were not in the lead at the beginning of the Splatfest. They have since revamped the way that Splatfests are scored and work multiple times since this video, so it's not really that relevant anymore. But it was very interesting how, despite none of my, like, logic being wrong, the assumptions that I went into that project with colored it so much that it ended up just not being a useful model anyway. This is a video that I recommend to a lot of people, and thankfully it's also one of the ones that's getting a lot of views. Um, if anyone ever asks about aim drills, if anyone ever asks how I practice my aim, if anyone's trying to transition from stick controls to motion aim, this is the video to go watch on the channel. Um, this is where I talk about all of that stuff. Um, this video I also still very much stand by. Um, a lot of these videos are kind of like... Um, you go into the new game, you know, or whatever, or like these are fairly early in my YouTube career. You can see this is like right when the game had just come out like a couple of weeks ago. Um, and I've got a lot of fresh ideas at that point in time, right? Th these are all the big juicy ones that I'm getting out of the way. And this is also when the channel's getting a lot more attention. You can see like my videos do not get these kinds of numbers anymore. I make a good video. It makes maybe like a third of the this number right here. Um, that's like one of the, one of the better videos that I've, I've, I'd have made in two months if I'm doing a third of this kind of view count. That's just because of how interest spiked when the game was just out and now it's, it's come back down. I've rewatched that motion video three times already per your instructions. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. Good, good, good. Um, call outs guide. I still definitely stand by. Um, there's another video similar to this that I will also be, um, going into more that I think is more up to date than this one and got like one eighth the view count. <laughs> um, that, that's going to be one of the ones that I go and look at and be like, hey guys, why are we, why are we ignoring this one? This is some of the best stuff that I've made. Um, but th this is a pretty good video as well, um, talking about especially the social side of how, how to handle callouts. I think I, I cover pretty well in this video. Rank points that this system is, um, this, this was a good video, but the system is different now than it used to be. It's a little bit, it's in a bit of a better shape right now than it was at launch. Uh, but this is a good kind of time capsule for what Ranked was like back when Splatoon 3 first started. Um, wave aiming, this is still a common habit that, you know, plenty of people see, and I will direct people to go and see this video from time to time. Frontline and backline positioning basics are two very good videos that I also recommend. Um, a lot of my analysis of positioning is explained in these videos of like, what positions does your weapon actually like? Does your weapon like to be up right in front of cover? Does your weapon like blind corners? Or does your weapon like long open sight lines? And it's these two videos, frontline positioning basics and backline positioning basics that are really useful to go and watch for those. Uh, we've got a weapon select video now. Ooh, that one got 48K, let's go. I mean, that was probably a lower number for the time, but I'd like those kinds of numbers these days. Uh, creating Sheldon on his weapon explanations. I still, I think someone is still out there trying to translate all of the Japanese ones for me so that I can do a reaction video to the rest of these. Like, I'm, I'm not, you know, rushing them. I'm in no hurry. I don't need it for, for content, but it, there, there's probably one of those videos coming out pretty soon. Um, there's lots of interesting stuff in the translations of this game. Like, I just watched a Rassicus video recently about the difference in translation between Commander Tartar's monologue when he's uh, rising up out of uh, the, the sea in Octo Expansion from the, like, human head. Um, that sheds a lot of light on the approach to localization that the American localizers had. Because um, they really took the game and kind of made it their own a little bit in some ways. There were, there were some very significant, like, differences between the Japanese and the American versions. Communicating with the D-pad. This is a good video. I, I think they're... I, I don't know if I've seen anybody else tackle this topic. And um, this video also was pretty well done, I think. Um, I, like, it, it's just good clickbait. <laughs> but also, um, I think that it's important to 
put into perspective how large a community of people, even for a relatively small game like this, um, how large the community of people is that play it, and how, like, I don't want to be like, you have no say over what happens in the Splatfest. Like, you have your one vote, you know? But it's important to understand that, like, the, the win rate that you have in your head of, like, oh, I've been noticing my team has been winning a lot, so we're probably winning the Splatfest. Like, that's not how that works. You, you are a very, very small amount of what happens in the Splatfest. People really liked the Super Jump Safety Quiz. Um, I think that was a pretty valuable one. There are a couple of those jumps where I'm like, there are probably some people who might have different opinions on whether to take those jumps or not. But uh, I think uh, for the most part, like it's a good way to get you thinking. And it helps explain a lot of my rationale for why to jump or why not to jump. So there's the backline positioning guide. Again, very good one. <laughs> I was trying to make React content for a little while and then... Apparently this happened. I don't even remember this happening, but uh, yeah, whatever. But people people did not respond to the React content a lot, so we just ended up kind of burying that a little bit. <laughs> um, this is a, a really important video still. I it's not up to date for all of the maps right now because like I Umami wasn't out for example, uh, but it's a video about whether it's worth it to get the Rainmaker pop. Um, cause sometimes it's not like, look at th this thumbnail says it all like on museum. It's only the top of the spinner that you're going to paint with that. It's not a lot of useful paint. It's not going to get you very much special charge. It's valuable to know that sort of stuff. And once you've seen the video, you can probably go and figure out with all the new stages when they come out, which ones are good to get Rainmaker Pops for. Have you considered posting your video reviews as abridged videos? Oh, VOD reviews as bridge videos. They're really good to learn mid-level concepts, but it's hard to watch something that long. Um, the problem with that is that the amount of time it takes me to edit one of those things down is more time than it would take in a lot of cases to just make a fresh video. Um, and since the content is already there online and a lot of my audience will just have already seen it live, I'm going to get less viewership on that sort of thing. And so it tends not to be something that's I can, you know, it, it's not the most efficient way for me to teach people things about the game. Um, better for me to just leave that live and have people skip ahead to it than to worry too much about trying to get it edited for folks. But that is a good question. And that is something that I've considered doing before. Like uh, way, way earlier on in the bravest days, um, I actually did try doing that a couple of times. Um, and the time commitment was just too much with all the other stuff I had going on. Uh, still absolutely stand by the squid bagging video. Um, that one got a lot of like negative attention. There were a lot of people who were like, yeah, you're a pansy. It's just squid bagging. It's not, it's not that bad, dude. Um, which I vehemently disagree with. Um, I think that is a very ignorant opinion of how communities are built and how to make things inclusive. Um, and I will continue to stand by it. I, I do think that squid bagging genuinely just makes you worse at the game and worse for the community. Uh, okay, the Kraken counterplay video. This is another one. It's very similar in nature to the inking base video. It's not as wrong as the inking base video was. Um, but this is one of those videos where I know it's going to be a little bit inflammatory. And it's intended to be. Um, this is a video where I'm trying to like approach people who have negative aspects of a casual mindset and shock them into dropping the feeling that they are entitled to win games. That's really what a lot of these videos are intended to accomplish, to get someone to realize that they don't get to win the game just because they play it, that they have to work at it to be better at the game than someone else if they want to win against that person. You know, it sounds silly to say that, but I think that's a subconscious thought in a lot of people's heads that like, um, hey, you can't do that. That's not fair. That doesn't let me win um, is legitimately something that comes out there. Um, I remember getting through that whole kind of mindset just on the playground, you know, when I was like seven running around the neighborhood and getting my knees grass stained Um I, I, a lot of my sense of maturity and competitive fairness and everything is kind of informed by the mistakes that we all made as kids in playing games of tag and whatnot. And, 
you know, trying to warp the game in ways that we are able to win them because it takes away advantages from our, our opponents. Um, and I think that, like, Kraken f f slotted into a lot of those things. They're like, I can't shoot it. That means it's really, really good. And I don't agree with that. Um, I think that Kraken is actually a pretty well-balanced special right now, especially now that they don't have the cheese to complain about. But even then, it was not a top-tier special. Like, Crab was still better, and I think Crab is still better. Th there's even maybe an argument that other specials are better at the, at the moment in time that we're at right now. So while I do still stand by the overall approach and the goal of that video... This is also going to be just a little bit maybe meaner than I like my videos to be. Um, the, there's, I mean, I, I, not to say that I don't stand behind what I said about r slash Saltoon, but um, I, I think that that is an absolute dumpster fire. But there, there are some parts of this that can come across a little abrasive, I think. Choosing a competitive main is a pretty good video. Um, I think that's helpful for, because that's a topic that I get asked about a lot, like how do you choose? And that's kind of a way that... Um, people can have to help with that. Uh, I'm going to do a few more and then we'll probably switch over to the reverse side and look at the videos that uh, I think should have been hits but weren't, basically. All of the, you know, the specific tactics and stuff like that, bomb placement, I still like those ones. Um, this one I'm glad did pretty well um, because I think that it was... It was frustrating to be watching the... So the, for those who don't know, um, this video is a response to a short I put out where I was asking, hey, who are the top three people who play your weapon that you like to watch to learn and get better? And every single one of them was just a really well-known content creator. It's like, Pro Chara, Gem, Chase247, Negus, Dude, Kiver. Uh, not Negus anymore. It goes by... Um, uh, Ken knows it. Ken knows it is uh, what they're going by now. Um, I think I'm right about that. Um, it, it was just announced like a couple days ago, so it's still new to me. Sorry about that. But um, it's like, okay, yeah, like I, dude, Kiver, Chara, all great answers. Like, no, no hate to them. But if that's the only group of people that you know, then there is a really, really big gap in your understanding of the scene. Like, I don't know if anybody said any member of Starburst, like the best team in North America, the best team in the West, the best team to have ever been in the West, maybe? Um, no members of them. I don't think I saw anyone saying Zero, even though Zero is still posting content. Like, I used Zero's content in one of my videos to explain shot calling. Like, there's, there's a lot th that people are missing, especially on unique weapons. Like, there are so many Tetra players besides Chase247 that are better than Chase247, and that Chase247 will tell you that. Um, there are so many Splattershot players who are better than me. Holy crap. Like, why why am I the best player? Kiver, at least. <laughs> Please say Kiver instead of me. Um, so, that that's something that I found was definitely an issue that's going to stop people from learning the game as quickly, because... You can just, like, absorb by osmosis how to play your weapon by looking at a top player play it. Um, and if people aren't doing that, then there are a lot of habits that they aren't going to break. There's a lot of problems in their painting patterns that you're going to see. There's a lot of slowness in aspects that they could be cleaning up that it's really easy to spot by just watching how a top level player does it, does it and being like, oh, wait, they're going way faster than me. How are they doing that? Um, ZNF Charger was, in fact, strong tier list. Uh, Trizuka, if anyone's ever been confused how to aim a Trizuka, this is a good video about it. Um, pretty short, but it's a, something that the game does not explain well to you at all. I stand by this video, but we are not playing Splatoon 2 anymore. Um, oh! <laughs> I forgot. So, uh, this is an old Bravest video about Super Smash Brothers that's actually excellent. Um, if you are interested in learning advanced Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, um, go and watch this one. Because uh, this is actually a really valuable resource that was not made, made by me at all. This was made by Mikey, a.k.a. The Cheat, um, who worked for Bravest for some time as the Smash Ultimate kind of uh, coach and advisor and went on to work at Beyond the Summit until they closed down recently. And so now he's uh, looking for work and somebody please hire him. Good God, he is a wonderful human being. <laughs> but yeah, th this is some really good like nerdy frame data kind of stuff on Super Smash Bros. Ultimate.
Did he take that fishmonger job? Not as far as I'm aware, unfortunately. I don't, I don't think they uh, offered good enough benefits. Unfortunate. Uh, the callouts. Oh, by the way, I don't know if everyone saw the tweet, but uh, on the callouts list, the new maps have been added. Um, we now have Umami Ruins and Manta Maria callouts, as well as all of the other ones. So if you haven't seen that yet, go and check those out too, and add those to whatever lists you've got. Um, finding your team is one of the best videos I've ever made. That is actually the source of the this is also dating advice meme. Um, and I highly recommend that anybody who enjoys my content watch it, because this is information that is valuable outside of Splatoon as well. I'm really happy that this video did as well as it did, and I should... I want to look for more videos like this. It's just like, uh, so this is about a, a play that Cherry Limeade made that was just like a really, really beautiful set play that let them win a game in a tournament match. There are only so many t times that I've ever been so inspired to make a video about just a single game of Splatoon or a single play. Um, and I think this was a very like authentic, cool expression of that interest in what they were able to pull off. Super, super cool team and always fun to watch and always good to see you know what they can make work because th if you if you're the low tier hero if you're playing a weapon that everyone says you should switch off if they play it and they can make it work you know these these guys are your heroes um very very cool so um it took a lot of takes to make actually like i did that i think all in one take and it was just over and over and over again just to get it exactly right because all of that is improvised. Like, none of that was actually scripted. So I had a lot of practice, but I also didn't have anything in front of me to read because I wanted it to be more natural sounding. I'm, I'm happy with, you know, I put good work into that, and that, that was a fun video, I think, that came out of that. Um, Devi is the substitute teacher. I mean, I stand by what Devi says about backline weapons more than I stand by my own words. Uh, what makes a weapon viable? I think this is... <sighs> I stand by the point that I was trying to make in this video. I think there are a few places in this video that might mislead people into thinking that I think things I don't. Um, but tier lists, I think, are very misunderstood. And like a lot, I get a lot of the same kinds of confusions, complaints on my own tier lists when I post them. Uh, because people are thinking that I mean something by a tier list that I don't. And so this is an important clarification. It may not hit in the way that I wanted it to for everybody, but at least I've got that out there. Painting Defensively, also a very good video. Okay. So this video right here, uh, this actually just came out like two days ago. This video is most of what I talk about when someone gets a team lesson. Like anytime I'm working with a team, I'm almost sure to be talking about something that I go over very briefly for the first like 15 minutes of this video. <laughs> It didn't do too hot. Uh, maybe it was just a little bit too long. Maybe the thumbnail wasn't as catchy or something. But, like, this is one of the more important videos, I think, for anybody who's playing on a team. I highly recommend that if you skipped this one or didn't get it recommended to you, you go and give it a watch. Um, because anything that I'm going to say about callouts to someone is probably going to be here. And this is what I was saying when I was talking about the callouts video from before. Like, this one's not bad, but this one is more up to date, I think. Um, so... If you have any problems with callouts, if anyone has ever told you that your team is uncoordinated um, or that, like, you're not using specials at the right times, you're isolating each other from, from each other, you know, you're not in positions to help each other, you feel like you're t making, quote, solo queue plays, this is the video that will help you fix all of those things. And that is, like, the number one problem that I'd find in any team that's below, like, low ink winning caliber. Um, it's always that because that's the thing that solo queue doesn't train you to do better. So definitely give that video a shot if you hadn't seen before. This is a big number for when it was posted because this was back from 2021. So this is when the channel was way smaller. But um, this is about, for any of the Dually Squelchers players, if you don't know what Jump Tech is, watch this video. Wow, this is an old video. Uh, this was the original video where I announced that I was going to do streams like the one we're on right now. Um, so like... The Tuesday before this video aired, I did the very first Squid School VOD review for the co-workers that I was doing the stream with. And when that did well, I put out there, hey, just contact me for VOD reviews. And that, that train has been going since 
March of 2021. It's been more than two full years now. <laughs> and we're still, we're booked out to June. It's not slowing down anytime soon. Um, this is really old. This is from, again, 2021. So I imagine that's going to be a lot of the videos here. Um, this was not an April Fool's video at all. This is just a tutorial for how to play League of Legends. Uh, if you're interested in getting into that game, highly recommend you watch this. This one is really important. I, I constantly am... I think I talked about this earlier today, about trigger discipline. Like, this is a, a video about exactly that um, that just came out last month. Um, so this would be a good one to watch if you haven't seen. Um, especially for frontline weapons. This is especially important for frontline weapons. Um, this was a good video. This came out of a conversation with Ren, coach from Sayonara, who I highly recommend you follow on Twitter. Ren is very knowledgeable about the game and very much in touch with a lot of top players and figuring out how it works. This video is very off topic from what's typically here, but it was it was one that meant a lot to me. Um, this is th this is also uh, the video where we talk about how Mikey doesn't have a job and uh, we need to hire him. Hire Mikey. The mailbag episodes didn't didn't ever go super well. I think this is the biggest one. Um, which is interesting, because, like, Q&A is such a big part of my stream a lot of the time. But uh, it ended up not being so much a part of... And I say that, and I forgot to put Restream on. So nobody's been seeing the chat this whole time. Very cool. Good job, Jem. <laughs> this came out in 2019. Um, there are still some things that are applicable. There's a lot of, like, Splatoon 2-specific stuff that's in it, though. Like, we talk about how certain specials can be used to get to the basket. Um... And, like, Bubble Blower's not in the game anymore, Baller's not in the game anymore, and those were two very major specials for Clamblitz. Oh, this video right here. I'm surprised this has as few views. I recommend this to everybody. This is the, the not, I'm Not Sure Shuffle is something that I bring up, like, it's, it feels like every other VOD review I do. Um, if you haven't seen this one, especially if you're, like, a short-range shooter player, definitely go and check this one out. Um, How to Tell When You're Being Indecisive is the name of the video. Um, this is a really important topic, I think, for mentality. So if people haven't seen results-oriented versus process-oriented thinking, um, I think that's a really important thing to understand about how to improve at the game. <laughs> I like this thumbnail. This thumbnail makes me happy. How is this only 13k? I've recommended this to so many people. This, if you're looking for, uh, what am I doing Clamblitz version... A lot of that stuff is just going to come from this video. You're pushing wrong in Clan Blitz. Yes, it's, you know, showing Splatoon 2 stuff, but all of this is still absolutely applicable in Splatoon 3. Um, if you have any trouble in Clan Blitz, if you don't like Clan Blitz, if you've, you're vaguely, you know, thinking there might be something more to learn about Clan Blitz, please watch this video. Um, this is a video that, like, it addresses a lot of extremely common misconceptions in how Clan Blitz should be played. Um, th this is probably one of the videos I've put in like the top three, Pe more people should see this. Um, so that one is something that I recommend all the time because there are a lot of people who just haven't analyzed Clan Blitz to the point where they understand that this is how it works. Um, this is all just life advice. This has nothing to do with Splatoon per se, but I mean, if that's what you, you watch me for, then that would be a good one to see. I still absolutely stand by... Wow, this one's pretty low, too. I guess this was just from an earlier part of the channel where we were, you know, this was a lot of views for us at the time. Um, but this is also a really important mindset thing that I still think a lot of the community needs to get over. Um, that's, like... People ask, like, is this good? Hey, I got, you know, uh, X power of 1700. Is this good? And the word good doesn't mean anything. And I explain more about that in this video. Um, this is another one that I think is like one of the the important classics that I just keep going back to and referencing, even though it's like two years old now. I recommend weapon compositions to a lot of people. That one's a lot more recent, so you're a lot more likely to have seen it. Uh, so, wow, only 13K. This is a video that I reference all the time. Like this is, again, one of the more referenced videos that I have um, that I talk about in actual VOD reviews. Um, so definitely go and check this one out too. This is actually still a pretty good movement tutorial. Um, it doesn't go into squid rolling because squid rolling did not exist. This came out in 2021. Um, but it still goes into an explanation of like which weapons want to jump and shoot, um, which weapons want to like sub strafe and how you want to use sub strafing, how do you want to use main strafing. Um, there, there's a lot of really useful stuff about combat movement in there that 
has mostly aged pretty well still. So if you're interested in learning more about movement, then that would be a good place to go. I think that's a pretty good overview. The vast majority of videos, I think, are maybe just like old, or they're written about something that's not in the game anymore. Um, but there are definitely some, some videos from back there that I'm still continuing to refer back to. Um, Why Every Team Needs a Frontline is one that I keep coming back to. And like, it's, it's tricky because I... It, there are only so many ways that I have to be able to keep getting these videos promoted because I'll make a video and then a month later, someone will come to me asking a question about that same thing I already made a video about. And I'm like, what am I making the videos for if people aren't going to see them and, and learn these things from them? But also it's like, well, how are they going to find these videos? Because they're not getting recommended because I'm posting daily. So I think one, one way that I've tried to combat this is by creating a playlist uh, Gems Picks. This playlist... Oh, no, 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 no. That's not what I wanted. Um, this playlist has some of the videos that I think were best made and most important to understand. That's kind of what I was going for with this. It's like, here are the videos that, like, I think you should watch from my channel. Um...